Welcome to the Infinity Academy from the Dice Gods. My name is Hydra and today's video is the first of four looking at the core concepts and mechanics of Infinity the Game from Corvus Belly. This video will cover turns and spending in order, the next the limited number of skills we suggest you use in your first games, then we're on to dice rolls and last we'll touch on missions and your very first game. This set of videos is very much aimed at players who are thinking about starting the game, have bought in or have just had their first few games. These videos will get you ready to play your first games of Infinity with a degree of confidence and knowledge which will make it a lot more fun, but more on that in a minute. First, two bits of information. First, this video and the ones which follow work equally well for Infinity N4, that's the full game, and for Infinity Code 1, which is the stripped back version. So whichever you're planning to play, welcome. These videos will help you get playing quicker and more confidently. Second, if you're enjoying the Academy, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. If it's really working for you, please consider supporting the channel by joining our Patreon. This will help us produce more of these videos faster and our patrons will gain access to exclusive videos and downloads relating to the Academy. Specifically, the mission we suggest you start with is a modified version of one called Supplies from the Infinity Rulebook. We will run through it on the last video of this series, but patrons will have the ability to download the PDF mission pack and an exclusive tactics video to help you with playing the mission itself. If you'd like to send us some love, find the link in the description. And now on with the fun. Learning Infinity, let's be honest, can seem like a daunting prospect. As with any war game, there's a whole new set of language to learn. ARO, order, skill, state. Some familiar, some not, but what do they mean in the context of the game? How do they interact within the rules to make a game? What can you use and when? With nearly a decade of introducing new players to Infinity, these next videos are based on a process, similar to the one from Corvus Belly, to get you into the game with the minimum of effort. They form a part of a series which slowly folds in more ideas and concepts into the game until you have everything you need to break hearts and faces with equal skill. Those videos will be releasing in the Academy over the coming months. This does mean though that we will be stripping away most of the rules for your first few games. Why? Because Infinity is a game of choices and options which are all unique, situational and varied, so you're faced with a massive number of decisions and rules each turn. In fact, when you activate a trooper, it can do up to two actions called skills. So far so good. But there are near on 40 different skills which you can do in a variety of combinations with each activation. So which ones should you use, and why, and when, and how? By stripping back the number of skills you have access to, the game becomes a lot easier and you can focus on the two most important things in your first game. First, to have fun. Learning a game shouldn't be a chore or a punishment. Second, to begin to learn the core processes and concepts which are at the very heart of Infinity. You see, Infinity is a little like learning to drive. When you first get behind the wheel of your first lesson, there's a lot of switches, pedals, doodads and what's it's around you. You've probably got some idea of what most of them do, but then the whole thing starts to move and yeah, and the fun begins. But give it a few lessons and things start being automatic. You don't need to think about how to signal that you're going to turn. You just do it. Unless of course you drive a BMW, in which case this is a skill you will never master. With Infinity, there are four main processes which you need to learn. Spending in order, shooting, saving, and resolving the dice. These processes are essential to playing the game, and once you've mastered them, you'll be able to build more complex skills and tactics into your game. Beyond those, you'll find the operational idea of a turn, concepts like active and reactive, all essential, none as difficult as they might first sound. If you're completely new to Infinity and you literally know nothing about it, we recommend taking 10 minutes to grab a cup of tea and watch our What is Infinity video. It's a good primer to get you up to speed. The link is in the description and in the corner of this video. Right, done? Good. Over these videos, we're going to dive into a player turn, spending an order, what your troops can do, 
including profiles and skills and rolling dice. That's it. But it's all you need to know to get started. In this first video, we're going to cover the turn and spending an order. As mentioned before, it's worth reiterating, we're simplifying the rules here by focusing on the most important concepts. So if you've played a game or seen some online and bits seem missing, don't worry, they will make an appearance later in future videos. So let's start with the widest view. Let's look at the player turn. Games of Infinity are almost always three rounds long, and in each round, players will take it in turns to be the active player. Which player is active first is decided by an initiative roll, which happens at the start of the game and remains the same throughout. If you went first on turn one, you're still going first in turn three. During their active turn, a player will count how many troopers they have in their army which are not unconscious or dead. When a trooper has no wounds or structure points remaining, they become unconscious. If they receive an additional wound, they go to dead. Unconscious and dead are types of state. These two are defined as a null state, meaning that they don't generate orders. For each trooper which is not in a null state, the active player will receive one regular order. It's called a regular order as there are other types of order, but we're not going to look at those today. The player will then spend their orders to activate troopers in their force until no orders remain, at which point the other player will become the active player and spend their orders. So this means that as the game goes on, you will lose troopers and so lose orders resulting in less activations for your troopers. But that loss of orders will only come into effect at the start of the next turn when you count up your orders again. You don't remove orders from your order pool due to casualties during your active turn. When you've counted up all of your orders, this total number is called your order pool, and you can spend this pool on your troopers as you see fit. This means that you don't have to spend regular orders on the trooper which generated them. You can spend your entire order pool on one extra heavy monstrous tag, like this guy, or spend the orders across your whole army, or mix and match as you need. It's acceptable to spend some orders on one trooper, move to another, then back to the first again, provided you have orders remaining. How and when you spend your orders should be defined by your mission and what you're trying to achieve. But note, as we discuss in the moment, an order creates the ability to use two skills, but the whole order has to be spent on one trooper. You can't spend a skill from an order on one trooper and then a skill from the same order on a different trooper. But whilst you're busy having your turn, your opponent isn't relegated to staring at the ceiling and rolling the odd save. Oh no. Whilst you're busy being the active player, they're the reactive player. As the name implies, this means that they can react to you spending your orders. They do this using automatic reaction orders, more commonly known as AROs or arrows. Now this is really important, so listen up. The reactive player receives an ARO for each of their troopers who can draw a line of fire to the trooper you activated, or if the reacting trooper is within 8 inches, known as the zone of control, of the activating trooper at any point during their activation. The resulting automatic reaction order can only be spent on the trooper which generated it, and can only be used to respond to the activated trooper. You can't use your ARO to shoot at an inactive miniature. So let's give you some examples. In this instance, the troopers on the right belong to the active player and on the left to the reactive player. If the active player activates the tag by spending an order on it, the reactive troopers all receive an ARO as they can draw line of sight to the tag. However, they can only react to the tag they can't use their ARO to shoot the guy that stood next to him because he's not activated. In this instance, when the tag activates, the enemy trooper can react because, although he can't see the tag, he is within 8 inches of it, so his zone of control grants him an ARO. 
Each enemy trooper may react to every order you spend, even if they've spent an ARO already in this turn. So if you spend 10 orders running around in front of one enemy trooper, that enemy trooper will generate 10 AROs and be able to respond 10 times. These AROs let the reacting player dodge, shoot, fight in close combat and much more besides. This means you can easily lose troopers in your active phase if you're not mindful of potential AROs and ambushes. With me so far? Let's do some more examples. Here we see Mike, the weirdly named Shansvasti Nox Trooper, deciding to run out in front of Matt the Skiritate. Matt, as he can draw a line of fire to Mike, can react. If Mike survives the ARO and activates with a new order in line of fire to Matt again, then Matt will get the option to spend another ARO, ruining Mike's day. As another example, Mike the Nox is at it again. Feeling pretty cocky after surviving his brush with the wrath of Matt, he decides to go for another run through the kill zone. This time, however, Mike discovers that Matt has been joined by Scrap Heap Sally, the tag. It's just not Mike's day. Now, as both Matt and Sally can see Mike, they both generate an ARO and so can react. If you run a guy across an alleyway and a bad guy is at the other end, even if you start and end out of line of fire, they still receive an ARO as they could see you whilst you made the move. This also means that you declare the ARO as soon as you can. So as soon as a trooper moves into your line of fire or zone of control, you have to declare if you will ARO and how then and there. If you don't do that, you lose your ARO, so pay attention. As mentioned before, once you've spent all of your orders, then your turn is over and your opponent becomes the active player and you become the reactive player. That leads us to what is arguably the single most important process in Infinity, spending an order. This is something that, like holding the steering wheel correctly when you learn to drive, you'll be pretty hard on to start with, but within your first 10 games, you'll get worse and worse. As you'll be using it so often, you'll just get lazy. We all do it. Even me, I know it's hard to believe, right? But yes. It's something you need to work on to keep sharp. I cannot stress that enough. And here's why it matters so much. As you and your opponent are switching back and forth between active and reactive, spending orders and calling AROs, you'll be interacting with each other a lot, more than in pretty much any other system I know. If you're sloppy, quiet, or quick with your declarations as you work your way through an order, you will ruin the game for yourself, your opponent, and make mistakes which could cost you the game. We'll discuss the common mistakes in spending order in a moment, but first, let's talk about the actual process. This is a six-step process which is well documented in the N4 rulebook, but we're going to add some details in here and hints, not just to make the game run smoother, but also to make it run quicker and to make it more fun for all involved. Again, this is ignoring a lot of rules such as long skills, coordinated orders, fire teams, camouflage, impersonations, and uh, yeah. they will appear in later videos. They are a thing, they do alter the process, there are exceptions, but it's important that you know the standard process automatically before you learn where the exceptions come in. So here we go. Step one, the active player declares the trooper they are going to activate, making certain the reactive player is paying attention then declares the first skill which this trooper is going to do. It is good practice to track that an order is being spent here, either by flipping a token in a group, moving them from one pile to another, or placing the order by the trooper which is using it. If a skill involving movement is declared, then the active player moves the trooper to its final destination at this step. Step two, the reactive player now declares any and all AROs. We recommend that the active player actively asks for them at this point too. The reactive player must declare all possible AROs which they wish to use. If an ARO is possible and not declared, the reactive player cannot then declare an ARO 
with that trooper during the next short skill. Step three, the active player then declares the second short skill. Again, if a movement skill is used, the movement is made and the trooper placed in its final location. Step four, the reactive player then declares any new AROs. Note that the new AROs are only possible if the second short skill of the trooper is a movement skill, which took the active trooper into line of fire or zone of control to a reactive trooper, which did not have it during any point in the previous first skill. Again, it's recommended that the active player gives the reactive player a nudge to check and confirm for AROs at this point. Step five, all AROs which have been declared are checked to ensure that they're valid. There are a lot of reasons why an ARO may turn out to not be possible. For your beginner games, this will mostly come down to whether the reactive trooper is in range with its weapon or not. But again, with full rules, there are many different reasons why this can happen. If it transpires that a declared ARO is not valid, then the reactive trooper affected is deemed to have performed an idle skill in place of whatever they wanted to do. This is a fancy way of saying stared at his feet awkwardly. Step six. Now the fun bit. We roll dice. This is called resolution of the order and is the only point at which you roll dice. This is key as it means that if an active player declares shoot as their first short skill, then the players roll dice, there is no second skill. By rolling the dice, they finished spending the order. Note that when resolving combats where a single trooper is being attacked by multiple enemies, all of the combats declared in the order are resolved, even if the single trooper dies to the first attack. When all the dice have been rolled and results worked out, then you're back off to step one until you run out of orders. Then you change the active players, simple as that. There are a few things to note here. First is the concept that everything in an order happens simultaneously. So if you shoot as your first short skill, then move as your second, you may choose to take the shots at any point during your movement. This lets you start hidden on one side of an alley, move into hiding on the other side and blast bullets down the alley as you go. Second, you'll notice the active player spends a lot of time nudging the reactive player for AROs. This is really important to avoid some of the most common mistakes new players make. It sounds daft, but when you're focused on moving over here or doctoring over there, you can lose sight of the fact that someone can shoot you. In Infinity, it's possible for a trooper to be on the board, but completely invisible until revealed by the player who owns it. Just because you think there are no arrows doesn't mean there aren't any. So being hot on asking whether they're going to happen will keep it in the forefront of your head that you might just get blasted off the board for making this move. In a two hour game, especially at a tournament, you can get pretty tired. Having someone engaging with you and keeping you in the game is helpful and good play. It also avoids the moment where the active player declares a short skill, the reactive player is tuned out. So the active player declares this next skill and the reactive player says, oh wait, oh, hang on, I had an ARO back there. Now, while this is clearly their mistake, it will leave a bad taste in the mouth after the game and make you a better person to play against if you've reminded them to just focus when you're declaring your skills. And that's never a bad thing. And the last common mistake we see is the double declaring. That is when you get hyped and blurt out both skills in order at once. I'm going to move here, then here. At which point your opponent declares three AROs, which you missed, and now you have no response to them because you've got no skills left. Mistakes like this can be costly, but they also, honestly, they leave you feeling bad post-game. You feel a bit dumb and it'll ruin your focus for the rest of the game. Getting into the habit of doing the declaring who, declaring short skill, asking for AROs, declaring second short skill, asking for AROs, process will make you less likely to make this error and improve the game overall. But you don't have to be this involved with the reactive player. It's just what we recommend and it's especially important when you're learning. Um, it'll help you both be more engaged with the game and have fun with it. But it is a choice, it's not within the rules, just good play that we recommend. 
And that's it for the first video on the core concepts of Infinity. In our next video, we will look at profiles and skills. The video after that will be focusing on dice rolls and examples of how these three videos and the ideas within them sit together. And then we'll move on to mission basics and a demo game in our fourth and final video. But for now, that's it from the Infinity Academy today. We hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below or track us down on social media. We seem to be everywhere these days. As ever, please like and subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss the next video. And if you found this video really incredibly useful or want more behind the scenes Infinity or Dice Gods goodness, please consider joining our Patreon and helping this channel grow. Either way, thanks for joining us today. Thanks to our Patreon and we will see you all again soon.